What's up, everyone? It's the chaplain here coming to you from my church office. Granted, it's blurred out, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I have taken way too long to get this video done. You know, I've got three jobs. I've got three kids. There's been sickness in the house. We had Easter. We had all these things at church. It's just been nuts. Had my spring break after the tournament, but I wanted to come out here and I wanted to make this video just for you. It's going to be probably a little bit uh, longer of a video. I'm going to try to put timestamps on it just to kind of help you out. I have a, I have a couple things. We're going to do some thank yous. I'm going to give you some after action reports of each day. Tell you the standings after day two. Um, tell you what happened on day three of BBR St. Louis number four. And then give you some event highlights. I'm also doing this kind of thing so I can edit the video, trim out anything that's unnecessary. I'm also getting over a cold. So Hopefully you won't hear me cough. I'll be able to edit those out. Like I said, I wanted to get on here. I wanted to make this video. I wanted to start with some thank yous. Um, I have an entire list of, of thank yous. And these are in no particular order. But you are going to hear some at the end that hold a little bit more uh, significance. And I'll tell you why. First, I wanted to thank Rich at Combat Miniatures. Uh, Rich Johnson, he has been one of our supporters for Every single event, all four events that I've done, Rich has been a supporter. He has sent prizes. He has contributed in some way, shape, or form. He's also been an attender for the last three events, him and uh, his partner, Chris, from Kansas City area. Um, so, Rich, thank you so much for being a part of our event. Next up, I want to thank Doug and the team at HBG, Historical Board Gaming, out there in Oklahoma. Doug has also been a supporter for all four years. Doug and his team have bent over backwards to make sure that BBR St. Louis is the biggest and best BBR event the world has ever seen. Not to boast, but it's the largest BBR event in the world so far. Doug and the team out at HBG, man, they they sent over so many things. Um, we got entire games, the whole Midway game. We got all kinds of gift cards. We got all kinds of prizes. Thank you so much, Doug and team. I wanted to also thank Matt Todd. Our friend out in Utah, Matt, has been a supporter of of me, of my channel, of games that we've played and, and of this event. He's always sent prizes. Matt has got some excellent prizes. He likes to chip in. Shout out to Blind Man. Uh, many of you don't know, probably don't know who he is, but Blind Man is a, a new friend that I've made. He posted on the website a little while back about the hit dice, BBR color scheme hit dice, because as many of you know, BBR color scheme... Out of Box has no color scheme for hit dice. Young Grasshopper has a color scheme for hit dice, and, and they're all diametrically opposed. Blind Man posted on the website that he's got access to these BBR color schemed hit dice, and so he was very generous. We were able to purchase enough dice so that every table had 20 of each color hit dice. He also donated prizes. He donated um, 20 of each color in hit dice and his own VP tokens that he's made. So thank you, Blind Man. I'm going to skip this one and come back to it, so I'm going to leave myself a little mark here. Madman and Moose Cow are up next. Huge thank you to Madman and Moose Cow. They were at every single event that I've hosted, and they actually won the first event. They got gold at STL1, and these guys, man, they, they show up to play. They donated prizes this year. Rich sent us a map of their Kings and Kaisers game, but they added in a rule book as a prize. And so thank you so much to them. Next up is general six stars, our friend, and he donated a couple of his own games that he has that are on sale uh, for sale rather at combat miniatures.org operation bear trap. He's also got an Iwo Jima game that I've played. It's great. It's a great game. General six stars. Thank you so much for the prizes. He also showed up with a team this year and he played. I'm going to come back to this. Thank you as well. Uh, next up, I want to thank Gary Blevins at Board Game Nation. Gary has been a longtime supporter of me, of the channel, of this event. Um, all four years, he's he's pitched in something. This year, he got to experience and get thrown into the deep end, his first ever BBR event, and he got to play. Uh, when I say thrown in the deep end, that's exactly what I mean. Up next is Wolf's Den. Our friend Steve over at Wolf's Den sent us some beautiful German-painted uh, military pieces, uh, mechanized pieces, tanks, and trucks. I wanted to also thank our friend Bill Taylor. Bill has been to many events, and he was coming to our event. His wife had uh, a fall, and um, we hope that she's recovering well, praying that she's recovering well, but he had to back out of the event. 
I was going to send him his registration back and he goes, you know what, man, I've been attending and, and I've never donated for prizes. So why don't you get some prizes? So we were able to buy a hundred dollars worth of gift cards just from Bill Taylor's donation of that. So thank you so much, Bill. I wanted to thank Quicksilver. This is one of the ones we're coming back to Quicksilver. Uh, our friend Carl over there on the East coast, Carl is a phenomenal craftsman and he has donated a bunch of things before, but this year he donated a custom dice tower that was so awesome. And I think Hambone won that as a prize. And then he also had these call out markers with this really cool flag on them on each one for each nation. He actually had a few for each nation. And I think Jabshire walked away with that prize, but Quicksilver, man, you you are a master craftsman, dude, and we all enjoy your prizes. So thank you so much for donating. I also want to give a huge shout out, this other one I wanted to come back to, to the Prussian Grenadiers. John and John, we've got Rommel and the Prussian Gamer. Um, honestly, guys, there's not enough that I could say about the Johns. They are just awesome guys. They were able to get us a ton of German artillery 3D printed so that everybody had enough. Also, every single table that we played on this year came from John's workshop. He put in the time, he put in the effort, he built them, he can, he, like I said, everything. Painted them, sanded them, everything. Um, on top of that, they 3D printed prizes for the medal winners. Um, and guys, it just, it, it's, it's almost innumerable, the contributions that they've made to the STL event. And so um, I'm just very, very grateful for the Johns. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I want to give a quick shout out to Kel and the team at Ellenwood Hotel. Um, we were there for two years. We were thinking we were going to outgrow it. And so we moved to another hotel and then that hotel had some issues and Kel took us back with open arms. So her and her team always make sure that we have everything that we need when we're there. Also, Lindsay at Heavy Smoke, uh, she she was the director in charge of catering there and she took really good care of us. We We have used Heavy Smoke every year of this event and we will continue to use it every year of our event because they are just great. It goes without saying thank you to Sired Blood, man, for making this awesome rule set that we all get to play, dude, that we just love. We're excited for the 1941 game. I've also got to give a huge shout out, and I kind of did this at the event, um, to Lieutenant Dan. If it wasn't for Lieutenant Dan, almost exclusively for Lieutenant Dan and his beautiful work on Sired Blood's map, I probably wouldn't be as into BBR as I am. I'm a, a, his, a history buff. I don't know everything, but I enjoy history and I love maps. I love maps. Like, they're one of my favorite things on this planet. Looking at a map just takes me to a happy place. And I came across you know, Grasshopper's page on YouTube. I, I came across General Hand Grenade. I came across G.I. Joe and he had this cool thing about BBR. And I was like, what's this? And so then it led me to Sired Blood's page. That's great. And then it kind of led me down the road and I found Lieutenant Dan. I'm like, gosh, dang, this is beautiful. And then he started building his table. I'm like, holy smokes, who is this guy? So it was because of him that I, I kind of dove a little bit further. And then I didn't say this at the event and I probably should have, but I've also got to give a huge shout out to my guy, Hambone. He's been at all my events. He's been a huge supporter of the event. Um, we've had a lot of behind the scenes conversations about the event, but Hambone was able to get me a version three Lieutenant Dan map and he brought it out. He came out to play one time. I had a, I had just two tables at my church in the, in the fellowship hall. He and his son drove out all the way from Kansas city to play. And he brought me this map and it just changed my life. So sired Dan Hambone, you guys, thank you so much for all that you do. And then last, but certainly not least, certainly not least is my family. It's a very, very difficult time of the year for my family and that's mainly because i'm gone on a friday and a saturday and a sunday days that i'm used to being home that my family is now having to figure out how do we obviously you know, i don't make or break the home but my wife even though she's superwoman i'm not home and and i'm out of pocket and it's very difficult to do the things that you're used to doing on the weekend without your helpmate and that's that's what i am so my family um, makes sacrifices um, of their time. Yeah, they came and joined us for a few days. We did elevator rides with the kids and, you know, they got to see some people. Um, my son remembers Detroit every year. He's like, hey, I know that guy. And he says his name and it's great. But uh, I want to say a huge thank you to my family. All right. Moving along. Day one. 
after action report, we had Clown World versus the Three Musketeers. Clown World is General Fund and Big Will. Three Musketeers is Parker and the Boys. One of them went with Dr. Doofenshmirtz as his name this year, so that's fun. Well, the Three Musketeers in round two or three, as the Allies, lost London. Yep. Clown World took London. And then because they weren't really happy with the way their life was going at that point in time, the Three Musketeers decided to come back with a vengeance and took Tokyo. Japan wasn't able to recover. And that game was over. That was a huge win for the Allies. Even having lost London, they were able to take it back, obviously. And then they took Tokyo and they won. And because of the round that they won in, they got extra points. And so they had a huge day. It was great for them. Legion of Doom played the MKT Marauders. Legion of Doom this year was made up of um, Miller Time and Krautfather plus Moose Cow. MKT Marauders, of course, is our friend Peleus and uh, Steve from Illinois. It was a big, big game. Uh, Legion of Doom was the Axis, and they got 25 VP. That's huge. But... MKT Marauders were able to take away one of those points. So good on them. Next up, uh, CG. What's CG? Crimson Guard. I, I wrote everything shorthand. So Crimson Guard versus the Apple Corps. Crimson Guard was the Axis. They were able to pull out 10 VP. They came so close to their first event win. But Apple Corps, if you remember from STL2, uh, fought for the gold medal against Detroit and Triple Crown. So Crimson Guard almost got it. So kudos to Crimson Guard for getting 10 VP. I've seen Apple Corps shut people down for a little bit uh, less than that. So, But Apple Corps came away with the win. Then we had the Kaiju Clan, a couple of Kansas City boys versus Two and a Half Men, which is Ironsides and Wild Bill and Dubsy. And there was a big score in that game as well, but they ended up pulling out the win. Then we had General's Fortress versus Rust Belt Cleveland. General's Fortress in their first ever BBR event. Pulled out a victory, got 12 VP. They lost five to Rust Belt Cleveland, so that was a good day for them. Next up was the Mad Hammers at the Axis versus Phoenix Rising. And the Mad Hammers is made up of Madman, Hammer Time, and Jabshire. You guys, you might know what I'm about to say. You might not. I was expecting Mad Hammers. Now, Phoenix Rising is a good team. All right. Quicksilver and Quarry, they, they know what they're doing. And this year, they even added uh, Kraken. I think it's Lieutenant Kraken. I'm just going to say Kraken. But they they were a three-man team. Phoenix Rising was was a good uh, a force to be reckoned with. But I expected Mad Hammers to, to hurt them a little bit more. Mad Hammers won, but they got 13 VP. So they didn't get 15, 16, 17. It wasn't no Legion of Doom game where they got 25 VP. They only got 13. So good on Phoenix Rising for holding them down. Then we had Midwest Command as the Axis versus Team Bruiser, which was Detroit and Lieutenant Dan. Midwest Command was, of course, Tom and Brian. Team Bruiser took three territories from Midwest Command, and they prevented the win. I think Midwest Command had 10, maybe 11 VP. The next game, we had the Prussian Grenadiers versus the Kansas City Warmongering Malcontents, or KCWM for short. The Prussians pulled out 14 VPs, so that's that's crazy. Um the KCWM was made up of Tam Van and uh, Bob Roby and Gary Blevins. So Bob Roby's played BBR before. I, I've had him at a different event of mine that I hosted. He, he knows what he's doing. Tam Van knows what he's doing. And Gary Blevins knows what he's doing. A 1942.2 world champion at Gen Con this last, uh, this last spring. Uh, but BBR is a different world. And so, there was some back and forth and, and explaining and conversations. And so KC kind of stumbled a little bit. KCWM kind of stumbled just a little bit. Prussians walked away with 14 VP. And then the last game, my game, I was teamed up with Admiral Balch uh, after Bill had to step back. And so um, kind of jokingly, too, we called ourselves Holy Balch. Well, we played OG. OG's Pagan and Hamba. Defending STL champs. Matched up against them on day one. Everyone was like, oh, they're beatable, they're beatable, they're beatable. Yeah, you guys can beat them, you can beat them, you can beat them. And I kept telling Balch, I'm like, listen, man, I, I think we can win this game, dude. We just need to play smart. We just need to be slow thinking. 
slow processing, and we can probably get this done. OG was Axis. Turn five, I had troops in Gibraltar. He had troops in Cairo. We had transports. And he looks at me and he taps me on the shoulder. Balch says, he taps me on the shoulder. He's like, you want to use coalition? You want to hit Rome? I was like, freaking heck yeah, I want to hit Rome. It's a freaking game, dude. It's balls to the wall, man. Let's go. This is a tournament. Let's go. So we laid it out. We set everything we could. And we took Rome in round five with a tank and two planes remaining. And Pagan, Pagan was Germany and Italy. And Pagan, Pagan is an excellent player. Pagan had set up all kinds of defenses and all kinds of things. But unfortunately, he didn't quite plan out the possibility of Rome. The coalition rule was still pretty new. It's actually in the optional rules at the end of the rule book. And so not a lot of people play with them. Well, because of that, when we took Rome, we also got, obviously, all of Africa back, right? We also took one territory in the Balkans because it was Italian-controlled. We also took Normandy because there was a lone Italian there, so we took that from the Germans. And he had a huge, nice stack of defensive Italian units there in northern Italy for us uh, against a German incursion. And so, bro, we took Rome. Round five, we took Rome. Now, these guys are classy guys. These guys had no ill intent. They had no um, malicious uh, thoughts. I'm sure they were kicking themselves in the butt. They came across the table, man. They were shaking our hands. Like, man, we don't know how we can win now. You know, with Rome gone, it's going to be a hard sell. Man, you guys you guys did great. This is great. You did great. And uh, I look over to Balch. After they're done congratulating us, I'm like, bro. They have 11 VP on the table. Like, we got to keep playing. We we can't. And they had already said, you know, we're, we're going to keep playing so you guys can get your points because this is a tournament. So I looked at Balch. I'm like, dude, we got to keep going. And, dude, I'm telling you right now, we played our freaking butts off. And guess what? We lost that game. They got 15 VP. And we took a lot of points from them. I think we took like 11 or 12, something crazy like that, mainly because Rome flipped. They beat us with 15 VP. So that was day one. Day two rolls around. People are looking at their matchups and they're thinking, what point value do I need or how many points do I need to earn in order to play this at this level or this or this level? People are thinking of the next day. People are ready to go for Sunday. They're ready to go for the medal rounds. They're, they're thinking ahead. KCWM and Crimson Guard. Kansas City war mongering malcontents with Axis. Crimson Guard were the allies. 39 points were given to the winner. 39 points. Crimson Guard came away with their first ever tournament win. Boom. Good job, Rich and Chris. Good job. Next up was Apple Core versus OG. Um, unfortunately, due to a work issue, uh, Pagan had to leave early. So he left Friday night, I believe, maybe Saturday morning. But Hambone played alone on Saturday. Now, he could have pulled from one of the three-man teams. He could have, you know, done any number of things. But Hambone, really just a stand-up guy, wanted everyone that was there to be able to fight for their right to party the next day. And so he's like, I got this. I got this. I'm playing the allies. I got this. So he played, and um, he, he didn't win. Apple Corps was able to get 21 VP that day. So that was a big day for Apple Corps. Big day for Apple Corps. The next game, Rust Belt Cleveland. Against Clown World, Rust Belt Cleveland was able to walk away with 17 VP. But I heard a crazy story, and, and General Fund, if you're watching, Big Will, if you're watching, dude, type it out in the comments. I'm going to try to tell the story to the best of my recollection. But So Clown World is the Allies. Big Will is the USA. And we're in the Philippines. Japan sends their stuff. They're going to attack the Philippines. And they declare all of their combat. They say what's going where and, and how's doing what. Well, Big Will still has his destroyer and his sub in the sea zone and his fighter. So the number of units that are going to be attacking the sea zone, Will is like, what if I scramble? What if I scramble? 
And so, again, this is to the best of my recollection. Big Will scrambles the fighter. So the U.S. has a fighter, a sub, and a destroyer defending the sea zone. And the Japanese invasion fleet is sunk. They can't make it. They can't make it. The planes went over to, to fight on the island. I, there wasn't enough in the sea zone to take the sea zone against the scramble. And all the invading guys, all of the transports were lost. All of the, It was absolute mayhem. Rust Belt Cleveland still walked away with a win, 17 VP. But that Philippine scramble story, stuff of legends, guys. Stuff of legends. Then you get to Balch and I's game. Man, we're, we're reeling. We should have had him yesterday. We should have had him. We should have had him. We should have had him. Should have had him. Well, because I am such a generous guy, and I really want things to be fair, based on the tournament rulings, we had nine teams, so we had a five and a four bracket. Or we could add a four and a five. If we would add a four and a five, one of the top teams over here would have like 20-something points, and that just didn't work for me. So we made it the top five and a bottom four. And because we made it the top five, Balch and I were at the bottom five of this side. And on the top five of the other side was the Legion of Doom. So because I'm a good-hearted fellow, we had to play the number one seed. We did not do well. Not at all. We got nine VP. They took 18 territories from us. We freaking lost so bad. Dude, that was such an ugly game. So we'll just move on. Phoenix Rising versus uh, Kaiju Clan. Kaiju Clan won. They were able to hold Phoenix Rising to just 10 VP. So that was a good game for them. The Three Musketeers played the Mad Hammers. And the Mad Hammers stopped the Three Musketeers. They held them to 6 VP. They took away 16 original territories. Crazy. I, I put a little sad face next to it because that's a rough day for the Three Musketeers. Then we had Two and a Half Men versus General's Fortress. And General's Fortress put up a heck of a fight. Uh, as far as I can tell from the aftermath and the conversations that I overheard, Two and a Half Men got their 12 VP for the win. They lost seven territories, but it was really hard fought. I think it was one of the last games done that day. And then the absolute last game that was done that day was Team Bruiser versus the Prussian Grenadiers. The Johns were able to hold Detroit and Lieutenant Dan to just 10 VP, so Prussians for the win on that one. All right, so now we're done with two days. Let's talk about the standings. The top five teams all have a 2-0 record. So the top five teams in order of point values – Legion of Doom is the number one seed. They got 82 points. Then it's Apple Corps with 72. Two and a half men have 63. Mad Amherst have 56. And the Prussian Grenadiers have 43. Top five teams, 2-0. and Then you got three Musketeers with 43 points, but they had a loss on the record, so that's why they're below the Prussians. Then you had Rust Belt Cleveland with 40. Crimson Guard with 39. There's your top eight. So we start boom, 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 picking tables. Who's going to play what for gold, for silver, for bronze, for iron. We start picking all this stuff. And right off the bat, friends and guard comes up to me and they're like, hey, man, we don't think we're going to be able to stick around. We're the number eight seed. What do you think can happen? I was like, all right, cool. I'm just going to go talk to the number nine seed, which was General's Fortress. So I went up to General's Fortress. I was like, do you guys want to play for iron tomorrow? I'm like, freaking heck, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. You're going to play Rust Belt Cleveland. So that game was set. It was good to go. We, we did all the stuff. Nine moved up to the eight spot. Sunday morning rolls around and Rust Belt Cleveland sent me a text, man, look, I'm so sorry, but something at work happened. I got to go. We got to go. I'm so sorry. So I text Hambo because he's the number 10 seed. I'm like, dude, you want to play for Iron? And he responds with, and this is almost a direct quote, only if you'll play with me. And I was like, what? What? Like you saw me play the first day, my man. You, you know how bad I am. And Balch and I, man, we, we went 0-2 in this event. We we could have, should have, would have been 1-1, one one, maybe even 2-0, depending on our day two matchup, if day one had gone better. But come on, man. Like, man, you want me to play with you? That was so humbling. And uh, and honestly, a little bit of, all right, cool. And Hambone is such a great dude, man. It was such an easy day. So I ended up joining Hambone, and I was able to play on day three. So the gold game was Apple Corps versus Legion of Doom. Silver was Mad Hammers versus Two and a Half Men. The bronze game was the Prussian Grenadiers against the Three Musketeers. And then the iron game was General's Fortress against OG. The bronze game, Prussians versus Three Musketeers, was a rematch of last year, except the roles were reversed. The Three Musketeers, as the Allies, came away with that win and won bronze. 
The silver game, Matt Hammers as Axis, two and a half men as allies. That game was just the whole time, dude. It was a good game. Uh, it was a hard-fought game. It was the longest-running game of Sunday. And the Mad Hammers came out with a win as the Axis. Good job, Mad Hammers. Before I give you the gold game winner and, and the recap of that game, I'm going to tell you that Hambone and I were able to walk away with iron. This is Japanese. Don't blur the tank, you silly goose. Stupid camera. The Johns printed up tanks for everybody, different tanks uh, for each winner. This was the iron tank. We won. Hambone and I were able to pull out a victory. It would, might have been the best Japan game I ever played. Listen, when you can have 12 Japanese infantry in Kansu by round five to take the China point, I'm just saying. It was uh, it was good. It was a good game. It was a hard-fought game. General's Fortress conceded after I wiped out his his fleet. He went to the Caroline Islands. I was gonna do a, a, I was gonna pull a dirty garg and I was just gonna hit all of his forces on the land. But I'm like, I don't want to fly all these things over there. I had jets. He had heavy carriers. I was like, bro, I got jets. I've got all these planes lined up. I got everyone a landing spot. Let's freaking go! And I eviscerated the U.S. fleet in the Pacific. That was game. So we won that game. That was great. All right. So now the gold game. I didn't get to watch watch much of it. But I heard enough about it to share with you that it was a hard-fought game until it wasn't. There was a few key mistakes, a few key dice rolls that happened, and the Apple Corps as the Axis, Legion of Doom as the Allies. Legion of Doom came out with a win. Our gold medal champs, Legion of Doom, congratulations. And then last, I just have a couple of event highlights. First of all, Madman only showed up for the bananas. I don't know if you knew this, but Madman loves bananas. I'm not being gross or facetious. He loves nanners. Absolutely. I was this close to writing his name on some of the bananas, but I was worried that the Sharpie might leach through the skin, and I didn't want to ruin his nanners. Another highlight was that day two Clown World victory in the Philippines when they scrambled. That was just, like, I still, all the information I heard about it, dude, it's just, wow. In total, there were 11 Axis victories and 11 Allied victories. The game is pretty balanced. I mean, it's it, it was great. The highest Axis score came from the Legion of Doom on day one, and that was a, a score of 44 points. The highest Allied score came from the Three Musketeers, and that was 43 points. Those are also the two single highest point values of the whole event. And then the last event highlight was the clock tampering. I don't know how to stop that. Keep telling people not to touch my clocks. But I don't know. Maybe I'll figure something out. Like uh, if I if I see or if I hear or if I find out that you are tampering with the clocks, your whole table loses. That might be our next step. I really don't want to do that. You're all grown men. Just don't touch the clocks. Don't pause them. Anyway, came out with fourth place. This is my second BBR medal in the three tournaments that I've played in. This was also the first time that I've played at my event since it's gotten so big. We got nine tables. I had 45-ish guys there, and I was able to play. Now, yeah, that, that increased my stress level quite a bit, but it also increased the fun that I had, and it was fun. This is the only game that I can play and lose and still have a great time. So all of that to say, there you go. BBR STL number four recap, done and done. I'm going to give a quick plug to the Chicago event. These guys, they put on a quality event. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about last year. This is their second annual one they're going to have in June. can't remember the exact dates, but it's in June. Ho hop on the Discord and check out the events. I know Madman's posted in there. Guys, it's coming. If you can, make it. Do it. Go. It's a good time. You're going to see a lot of familiar faces. Hopefully, you're going to meet some new faces. It's going to be a good time. And then BBRSTL5. I don't know the date of my next spring break in March of next year, but that's usually when it is because I have three jobs and I have to coordinate my event with my spring break. So, um, that is what it is. I'm the chaplain. I'll be praying for you.